I'm Natalia Bonner. Welcome to the Free Motion Filler Frenzy lesson number two. Today we're going to be free motion quilting, of course, some double bubbles and some triangles. I love both of these designs and they're so much fun to machine quilt. You are going to see that I'm going to be quilting here on my Gamel 22 inch machine. I am stitching in the stitch regulated mode. I have my stitch length set at 13 stitches per inch. The thread that I'm using here on the top, I'm actually going to be using two different colors in today's lesson. We'll start out with color number 471, and then when we move on to the triangles, we're going to switch to so fine color number 460, and in my bobbin, I have bottom line color number 623. I love those threads. The batting that I'm using here is one layer of the Quilter's Dream wool batting. I love the loft and texture that that batting creates. All right, friends, let's hop over to our machines and let's get stitching. In the first lesson, I showed you how I marked out and then started quilting with some loops and blocks. I also defined my spaces by stitching a wavy line. So to start today's lesson, that's how we're going to start by defining our space. When I'm stitching out these double bubbles, I am using So Fine color number 471. So today we're going to be taking the concept that we used in lesson one, quilting those loops, and we're going to shrink it down and add a whole bunch of echoes. This design, because I'm using high contrast thread here, it really stands out. But if you were using a matching thread color like a white, it is a beautiful background filler. So to stitch out this design, I start out by stitching a circle. Once I have that circle complete, now I start adding echoes. You'll notice as I'm stitching these echoes that sometimes I'll create a full echo that goes all the way around my circle. So I'll keep stitching in the same direction. But as I stitch out that echo, I'm making it more heavy or a little bit more space on one side. I kind of want it to look like it's echoing off of one side a little bit more. Often when I am quilting these, you'll see that I'll stitch that first ring, then the second one, the same direction, and then I'll kind of work back and forth in more of an echoey type pattern and add a few rings to the outside. When I'm quilting these pebbles, I try to kind of alternate directions and make them go, you know, pointing up, pointing down, pointing to the right, pointing to the left. I feel like overall I end up with a better result if I make them a little bit more random. Also, the number of echoes, I try to keep really random. Some of them might have five or six echoes, and some might not even have an echo if I'm quilting a pebble just to fill in a small space. So I'll repeat that process until I've filled in my desired space completely. Like in lesson number one, I want those circles and my orange slices to look as if they're appliqued and sitting right on top of my quilt. So I'll quilt right up around them. Once I've finished all of my quilting on my whole quilt, then I will come back and I'm going to quilt around them, creating an outline, and I'll also quilt on those circles. If I were not changing thread colors, however, I would quilt those right now as I'm going. Anytime you're quilting a design like this, the key to success, besides practice, obviously, is just being consistent. So because I'm quilting this design pretty small and pretty heavy, I want to make sure that I keep my design pretty small and pretty heavy. I don't want to have an area of the quilt where I have a large section with a larger fill. I want to keep the scale and density pretty close to the same across my whole quilt or my whole background area. This is such a fun design. I can't wait to share and see your progress. Don't forget to share in our Peace and Quilt Show and Tell Facebook group.
Let's move on and quilt some triangles. You can see here that I have now switched thread colors. Now I'm using a pink thread. So across this quilt, I'm going to be using multiple thread colors. Just a fun way for me to create even more interest as I'm working my way through this quilt. Because I've moved to one of the pink orange slices, then I'm going to use pink. Let's stitch out some triangles. This design on the right quilt in the right space is so much fun. I start out anywhere by stitching a triangle. It's not a closed triangle, it's kind of a triangle. Once I've stitched my first triangle, then I just start echoing, adding more triangles to the outside until I've made that triangle as big as I want it. I'll repeat that process, creating a whole bunch of triangles across my whole background filler. You'll notice as I'm stitching out, sometimes there's awkward little spaces. I'll just add kind of a geometric line in there. I want everything to be filled in consistently. I love my quilting to look consistent across quilts. So by adding in a little line, it keeps my density very consistent. And when you look at the quilting as a whole, you're not going to notice weird little lines. You're really going to notice the triangles. Similar to those double bubbles, you can see here that I add a lot of echoes and sometimes not very many echoes. The more random you can be with designs like this, and when I say random, I mean don't do them all the same and make them go in different directions. The more random you are, the better off your design will look overall.
I hope you all found just a bit of inspiration from today's fun designs. I can't wait for lesson number three in the free motion filler frenzy. Squiggles and stiffle. Have a great day, everybody.